Eternal God, help us to praise thee at all times, first thing in the day, last thing at night, and everywhere in between, to praise you for your great mercies, for your goodness towards us, for your loving kindness, for the forgiveness of our sins, which comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us also to praise you and delight in the fact that we will praise you forever, for we have everlasting life through the work that the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished by his atoning death on the cross of Calvary. So may we ever live to praise thee. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's Devotional Bible, a Christian podcast desiring to honour the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the devotion for August the 26th. I will praise thee forever. David, uh, Psalm Psalm, uh, 52. David at this time wrote a psalm of which the title is To the Chief Musician, Maskil, a psalm of David, when Dueg the Edomite came and told Saul and said unto him, David is come to the house of Ahimelech. Verse 1. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? Spurgeon says Doeg had a small room for boasting in having slaughtered a band of defenceless persons who never drew a sword. He ought to have been ashamed of his cowardice. If David here refers to Saul, the words are equally forcible. How could a man who had in former days been valiant in arms now rejoice in the murder of the helpless? The scripture says the goodness of God endureth continually. Spurgeon says if priests be slain, their master lives. God's cause lives on, though good men be hunted down. Verse 2. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Spurgeon says, Eastern barbers use the razor so well that a man scarcely knows that his hair is shorn, and so with wily cunning base men injure the servants of God. Doeg's tongue with its soft but sharp speeches cut off the priests of the Lord. May the Lord save us from slanderers and backbiters. Verse 3. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Spurgeon says, See how low a man can descend, so as not only to utter falsehoods, but to love them better than truth. It is a mark of the foulest character when a man actually prefers dishonesty to justice. Verse 4. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Spurgeon says, Some evil persons have a taste for calumny, They are never better pleased than when they can injure those who are better than themselves. Shun them. Above all, never fall into their sin. Verse 5. God shall likewise destroy thee for ever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. Spurgeon says God will one day deal out justice to slanderers. He will pull them up like ill weeds and cast them into the fire. The terrible portion awaits all liars. They will not let others live, and God will not let them live. Verse 6. The righteous also shall see and fear, and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Spurgeon says, Good men will look down upon plotters and slanderers with supreme contempt, and the Lord will give them good cause to do so for they shall be taken in their own net. Their subtlety shall slay them. Persecutors may be rich, but their wealth shall not save them. Justice has ways and methods for bringing the great ones of the earth to its bar. God cannot be bribed. He will avenge his own calumniated servants, and that right early. Therefore let us patiently endure all manner of slander for Christ's sake. Verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God for ever and ever. Spurgeon says, Though much abused and hated, David was not plucked up nor destroyed as his enemies would be. He was one of the divine family and found himself in the household of God everywhere. And yet more, he found himself fresh and vigorous at all seasons like an evergreen olive. If Nob was as something situated upon the Mount of Olives, we can understand why the psalmist was led to adopt this simile. Though Nob was gone, with the olives stood, and David also lived on despite Saul's enmity. The psalmist's faith, like an olive, was abiding and perpetual. Its leaf did not wither, neither did its fruit fail. It renewed its youth from day to day and possessed a sacred immortality. He knew God's mercy to be eternal, and in that he trusted. What a rock to build on! What a fortress to fly to! Verse 9. I will praise thee for ever, because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. 
Spurgeon says, David's thankfulness was continual. Like the mercy in which he rejoiced, he looked upon God's punishment of his foes as already accomplished. Thou hast done it, and therefore he waited patiently till the bright day should dawn for himself and the persecuted church. He felt, as we ought to feel, that quietly to tarry the Lord's leisure is good for all those who would be accounted the Lord's saints, and is also one of the best means of doing good to our fellow believers, who from our patient waiting will learn how to possess their souls in peace. And the hymn is, Fierce burning coals of juniper and arrows of the strong await those false and cruel tongues which do the righteous wrong. But as for me, my song shall rise before Jehovah's throne, for he has seen my deep distress and hearkened to my groan. Amen.